should I say Wen Ho, which is Chinese for greetings. So last week, it was my best friend's birthday and we decided to go out for Chinese food. We went to this place called Hunan Taste. Now back when they built this place 40 years ago, it must have cost a fortune. It's very ornate, very well decorated. It's a landmark, it stands out for miles. A lot of red, a lot of gold. And once you get inside, they've decorated it even more. They got Chinese statues, they got fish ponds, a lot of fish tanks. And the walls are divided by more fish tanks. And some of these tropical fish I know get expensive. I know they're like a hundred dollars each and they're very, very sensitive fish. It takes a lot of care and maintenance to keep them alive. But stepping back in this place is like stepping back in time. Now everybody knows that Nixon loved his Chinese food and his Mai Tais, and I'm not sure if that was a result of before or after he visited China. But when he visited China in 1972, Chinese culture in America started to take off more, especially when it came to decor. And that's why I love going back to this place. It just takes me back to the 1970s and when Chinese interior design was all the rage. Now I know a lot of people say, Chinese restaurants serving tiki drinks or tropical drinks don't cut it. That's fine. We all know Don Beach serve Chinese food. And if they want to offer a menu that has tropical drinks on it, I'm there. Now the drinks, I don't know if they were true in the traditional sense. First of all, everything was served in a hurricane glass, and this is a hurricane glass. For something like this, I would probably at home use a pearl diver glass because we're going to float some rum on top of here and of course you could always use the traditional Chinese highball glass or dragon glasses call it that because it's got a red dragon on it so when I looked at the Navy grog it says red wine float I'm like that's not a Navy grog maybe that's their version of it but as much as I love wine I don't put my wine in cocktails because then it's just basically called sangria and if I want sangria or wine I'll order sangria or wine. So I skipped over that and I went for something called the Happy Dragon. Now the dragon as many of you know is very prominent in Chinese culture. As a matter of fact it was part of their flag up until 1949 when they adopted the current flag which is the one we know today for communist China. My friend got one called Pan is Delight, which is made with the Japanese melon liqueur called Midori. Back in the 1980s, Midori became really popular. They're putting in a lot of drinks, and I loved it in a melon ball. And a melon ball was basically just a screwdriver with Midori in it. So you had your vodka, orange juice, and of course Midori. I love those things. They were so tropical tasting. I drank a lot of them. However, when I got the Mai Tai, I was a little disappointed. It was just basically pineapple juice with a rum float. My friend's wife got a lychee martini. That's fine. I was in the mood for something tropical, so I went for the happy dragon. Of course, we had to start out with the poo-poo platter because everybody loves the flames. Everybody loves the display. And of course, they give you a wide selection of all their appetizers, the ribs, the egg rolls, the dumplings. The shrimp toast was very good. And usually it's very greasy. The shrimp toast was excellent. And then we ordered a bunch of plates for everybody to share. And in true Chinese fashion, they bring them out and they put them on a Lazy Susan, which is a spinning little table on top of the table so everybody could share. Because that's what you do with Chinese food. Sometimes you don't know what you're ordering and you want to taste a little bit of this and a little bit of that. We order three different dishes and we all share. Now for this drink, I know you typically see me mix it in front of the camera. I'm not going to do that today because quite frankly, this is such a simple drink according to their menu. It just got coconut mix, orange juice, and Myers rum. But somehow, I didn't get the proportions correct, so I'm still refining it, and I'm gonna post the recipe at the very end once I know all the proper 
proportions for this drink so you could enjoy it at home. Another issue maybe is I'm not using Myers rum. Uh, Myers rum, as you know, was very, very popular back in the day, and most of the tiki drinks you're drinking probably had Myers rum in there because it was Jamaican rum. It was very popular, and that's probably what they were mixing with. Today, I don't know what happened to the brand. It's like $30 now, which is expensive for rum, and they're putting it in a plastic bottle. I don't know why they have to put it in a plastic bottle, but as many of you know, plastic is really the plague of our oceans. And just anything in plastic, it's a play. But you know what? There's a lot of better dark Jamaican rums out there. But in its place, I decided to use Appleton Estate Signature. I think it's a better rum. It comes in a glass bottle. And then what I'm going to do is once I get this all filled up, I'm going to save an extra ounce of this. And I'm going to float it on top of the drink. Now, I don't know why, but this is such a simple drink. Like I said, it was delicious. I couldn't wait to get home and try it at home. The ingredients may be simple but getting it perfected was not. But I'm gonna post the recipe now for you to enjoy. Don't forget, the latest Exotica Modern magazine goes on sale, issue number 22. It has my article about Paradise Lost in New York City. It's Manhattan's newest tiki bar. They call it tropical inspired, but again, I take my tiki and my tropical wherever I could get it. And some of the people that were once at the Polynesian are now at Paradise Lost and Race Sackover as one of the owners. So don't forget to order. Go to houseoftaboo.com. And until next time, mahalo and cheers. Isn't happy hour anytime?